Okay. Good afternoon. Um, I think we're waiting for the master of ceremonies, but apparently he's not here. Um, so we will I suggest we just go ahead and proceed without the master of ceremony. Uh, how many of you, is, it, is this just an English speaking audience here or, you know, go French? How many of you need English? I mean, I can speak either. Okay, so we'll carry on. Okay, enough. Okay, it was just it was easier for me. Uh, okay, so my name is um, uh, Jean-Baptiste Piazzentino. Um, I am currently a consultant. I work at uh, a small consulting firm called EdTech One, and we provide consultancy for EdTech companies. Uh, I, before that, I did several stunts. You know, I save you the whole uh, resume here, but just to give it a bit of perspective what I've done and you know, why I'm here today. Oh, here's, here's the Master of Ceremony. Peut-être, uh, vous voulez vous les présenter, dire un mot peut-être Je peux revenir en arrière. <laughs> okay, I just go ahead. All right. Well, as the master, you can interrupt any time. <laughs> okay, so uh, previous stunt I was saying, I was the uh, deputy CEO of Quant. Um, you may have heard of this uh, uh, search engine. Um, and in this capacity, one of my projects was Quant Junior. And this is how I got into involved into uh, education sector in ed tech sector. You know, this is a, com this is a search engine that focuses on uh, and providing in a search web experience, you know, for kids, six to 12 years old available in several languages. I will filter out porn and uh, violence and drugs and hatred language. Um, so um, this is how I got involved in, in the ed tech sector. And I think that this is uh, probably the next paradigm shift that we're going to um, witness uh, in technology. Uh, there, has been, there has been a lot of changes and disruptions in the, in, in the, in the several in, in the digital sectors, you know, many of them, transportation and uh, obviously computing in general, online computing. But education has not been, has not received quite a bit of attention, quite a bit of love recently. Uh, and uh, with the progress of AI, progress of neurosciences, uh, cognitive um, sciences, I believe that there is, we are a crossroads of uh, technologies that will enable um, a lot of changes and uh, changes in perspective as well of teachers and students and uh, all the players in the sector. Before that, I uh, had the pleasure and honor to um, drive uh, Firefox Mozilla uh, operations in France uh, and particularly working on a global level also on Thunderbird for those of you who are open source addicts and, and supporters. Hello. Um, and um, so today we're gonna we're gonna talk about um, data in the in the, for education and education in the data, data economy. So my talk will be not technical at all. I wanted to uh, give this opportunity, this opportunity to uh, present a bit of the challenges and sort of changes that we've been uh, seeing so far, and maybe suggest a few. Um, options to go further and dig deeper uh, and I will be at your disposal of course you know after the conference or during the conference you know to answer any questions if you feel like asking questions while am I speaking just please go ahead uh, that will be uh, even more interactive so uh, I'm 53 and when I was uh, at school uh, I had a lot of textbooks and recently kids are no, no longer have textbooks or less and less textbooks and they have more digital resources, digital textbooks. Uh, same applies to uh, notebooks. Um, this is how it looked when I was young, uh, and this is how it looks today, which you know, seems a bit odd, uh, because actually Google is penetrating, of course, the education sector, and they're providing quite a bit of software that allow kids to do their assignment. Uh, talking about assignments, this is how it looked for me. You know, I had to fill, you know, paper. Uh, and today, this is, oops, yeah, this is how it works, how it works for most of the kids. Uh, not necessarily in France, actually, but abroad, uh, particularly in the US, of course. Uh, kids have to enter their uh, assignments into, in online. And then, you know, you, 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 if you've ever been exposed to this uh, platform, you know, it's quite powerful, quite innovative. 
Um, it provides teachers, for example, with a way to detect automatically copy pastes. Uh, so if you fill an assignment, you know, Google for Education will signal you as a teacher that this sentence is a direct copy paste from what people, that, what, what students have found on the web. So pretty powerful, pretty uh, invasive as well, as well. And obviously, um, I'm being a defendant of privacy. Obviously, this uh, phenomenon of uh, acculturation of kids to Google and other networks, you know, while they are still very young, is maybe of an issue or has to be addressed, uh, and at least be conscious, uh, consciously addressed. Um, I will save you how the uh, diary looks. You know, this is how it looks today, the pronote in French, uh, but there may be quite a bit of others, you know, uh, uh, abroad. Um, and recently, um, the advent of uh, digital technologies and the web in particular has see the emergence of new products, you know, allow kids to do uh, things related to their school assignments aside from school, we call it parascolar. Um, and here's an example of Super Devoir, which is a French, uh, French website, and kids actually, when it's 10 p.m., they have not finished their assignment, they can post a picture of their assignment, you know, online, and hope for someone, some other kid uh, or learner to provide them with help and answers and do their homework, you know, and this is quite powerful. You see a surge at 10 p.m., you know, of posts, you know, people in despair uh, looking for uh, uh, help in, in uh, doing this, this homework. Um, so, what we found is that <coughs> learners are no longer, um, or schools, uh, students or pupils, they are no longer fixed at school, they are becoming nomads. Uh, they work at school, they work in public transportation, they work at home, they work everywhere. Uh, there, is a connecti there, is, there is connectivity, you know, they work together. Uh, they change class, they change uh, schools, they change geographical region, uh, they, they, they do quite a bit of movement. And of course, uh, in doing this, you know, they use uh, different computers, smartphones, tablets, you know, the, the infamous bring your own device, if, you ever, if you're familiar with this uh, concept of people bringing their own device, a way to save money, probably, for the government, hoping that uh, parents will provide kids with the necessary tools, replacement of books, basically, or at least media um, uh, to uh, a means to support uh, online resources, um, smartphone, tablets, um, and they can be either school provided, most of the time uh, in lower uh, grades, you know, they're provided by uh, governments or, or schools, and uh, as the, the, the higher you grow in education, um, uh, the uh, more proprietary and private devices uh, they become. Um, how many of you have heard of 21st century skills? Okay, all right, okay. Okay, so basically, um, well, in the 20th century, we found, um, in, um, uh, sorry, um, teaching was really based about, uh, uh, around teaching what they call routine uh, competences. Uh, you have to learn something and then you are programmed and you have learned things to repeat them over and over again. In the 21st century, with the advent of knowledge, uh, assignment and knowledge work. Uh, we are more and more asked to be creative, to be able to work uh, in groups, to show empathy, uh, to understand uh, the level of group and the group you are uh, working with, so uh, being involved, inserted in a network. So kids are already asked, and from a very young age, asked to work and collaborate uh, with online uh, uh, products that allow them to uh, get a sense of uh, work group collaboration. Um, and obviously here, I'm not gonna name you know, the, the biggest f social network on earth, but they are very, very strong already in, in, in classrooms to provide kids with a way to social, uh, socialize you know, through uh, um, uh, Facebook. Um, uh, for Facebook for Classroom, it's called. Um, so that you know, kids can uh, start to acculturate themselves uh, in, uh, with, with social network they, they're working. The things that have changed <coughs> um, in the last, um, I guess, probably 10 years, uh, 15 years, is uh, the realization and uh, obviously um, uh, understanding that uh, the more we use online tools, the more we create data. And the more these data 
uh, are created, the less they are archived and being um, and, uh, re um, given back to users. Um, I still have textbooks and workbooks and um, traces of my work you know, I did at school. Today, my own kids have seldom of them, uh, only a few of them, sorry. Um, they, most of them are somewhere on the cloud, somewhere in the digital uh, storage that they may have uh, lost uh, on the way or maybe, maybe not even given back. Uh, they produce content, they produce traces, uh, they tell a lot about who they are, what they do, what education, competences they've uh, acquired, uh, and most of these are lost, uh, and that's a big issue. Uh, that's a big issue for uh, if we understand that 21st century competences are about acquiring new, um, and new competences, uh, acquire, uh, being able to learn and adapt um, with not knowing where have you been, where you have been, you know, what curses has taken you to this place becomes a big issue pedagogically speaking. So this data uh, are created by students, by uh, higher education students, or even by workers, um, considered lifelong learning. Uh, and they are absolutely necessary to, for you to find a new orientation you know, in your lifetime. You find you know, a new job or decide to change life and you need new competences to do this. Um, they are very important for schools to attract you as a potential customer of theirs. Uh, or at least user, depending on which side of public, private, you know, uh, education sector you are on, uh, and companies, of course, uh, as the uh, you know as a recruitment criteria uh, that are super important. So this data is very being lost, and there is currently no scheme to empower users with their education data, and that's I, I, I assume you will understand this as an issue, uh, so, so social issue, societal issue. So the first question, the, the first answer to this, you know, from a technical angle, is, oh yeah, we need a personal data space. And I, I'm giving you here an example of you know, what has happened here. You know, there's a company, a French company called Cozy.io. You may have heard of them. They provide personal data clouds or data clouds. You know, they are replicable. There are personal clouds that you can that are hosted somewhere uh, that they that are equipped with automated data gathering. Uh, components or agents that, that go and fetch uh, APIs through a set of APIs or through web scrapping data that are uh, relevant to you as self data um, and store them uh, into a universal storage and then make them available uh, for the an, an application's ecosystem. Um, so, um, talking Taking a step aside from education, um, this may uh, be applicable to energy, for example. So you may be able to collect uh, your energy data out of your you know, electricity or utility provider. You know, I'm talking about, about energy, electricity could be gas or it could be um, uh, water or you know, any, anything you know, that, that, that uh, in this field. Gather this, collect this into your cloud, and then use this for a uh, power switch, for example. You want to switch. Um, uh, energy provider, so you can provide your data back to the uh, competitor, and then this competitor will be able from there on to establish a proposal to you, whether you know it, it is favorable or not, is up to you to decide. But there is this mechanism of using the user as the pivot point you know, for data exchange. Right? So the philosophy that is currently being uh, probably most, uh, most successful is using the individual as the pivot for your data. And you know, to, uh, uh, um, uh, companies to companies or APIs to APIs, discussions seldom appears. Only in, uh, to my knowledge, only in, te in telecommunications where you have uh, number portability that has been decided as an industry. Right? Um, uh, what I described here you know, uh, works uh, obviously with Cozy, but you know, there, may be, there are several other um, initiatives you know, that go in, in this direction. You know, you may, you, of course, you're probably aware of Solid, uh, which is a decentralized way of doing the same thing, that is using the user as the pivot you know, for data exchange. Right? And doing so, um, I guess the hope is this empowerment of users with the data. So if we push this into, the, uh, uh, into a realization in the education sector, this is an, uh, a slide taken from uh, the Academy of Rennes, which is a, uh, 
uh, education sec district uh, from Brittany in France, where they've implemented uh, cozy clouds uh, for kids, uh, for, for kids to uh, exchange data. So they have what they call an, an, an espace numérique de travail, which is a digital workplace you know, provided by the government, you know, for kids to uh, find a repository for assignments and data and a, pro a set of applications that are provided um, under a certain number of rules that, uh, um, that uh, p publishers have to obey. Um, using this Tutatis, which is Tutatis is the ENT or the workplace, um, Establishing clouds aside of this uh, data work workplace, um, digital workplace, and then um, scrapping or interacting you know, with this ENT to collect data and give this data back to the student. Right? And then from there, um, they've, they've used you know, federated identity through OpenID. You know, we, may get, we may get into the details if you prefer, but that's an example of what, uh, to my knowledge, is the most advanced uh, implementation of data portability in the ec education sector. Another example that uh, we may foresee uh, once we have a data portability mechanism Im uh, developed or implemented as I described is uh, a company um, that, uh, by the way, disclaimer I work for, uh, called Human Roads. They provide orientation services, so they collect and analyze tens of millions of uh, career path and draw uh, maps of orientations, orientation maps from there on. Um, so imagine that you know, bringing your data that are stored in your cloud into this application will immediately allow you to be set somewhere in this map and then being able to see the options you have from there on, you know, again, considering orientation as being an education uh, application. I'm just looking at the time because we don't have that many. So, um, we started working on a work group uh, as an emanation of My Data France um, through uh, mapping the different uh, actors or players in the sector. Um, obviously, students uh, or learners who can use this data storage to monitor to, um, uh, their progress, to assess their competences, to um, establish orientation checkups. Um, Obviously, parents, um, myself as a parent, would like to archive, you know, the production of my kids because, you know, they do some very nice drawings or some new nice uh, French compositions. Uh, those I would need to, uh, I would love to be able to archive, which today I'm not able and I will never be able to get them back because they are somewhere disappeared in, you know, in the cloud or if, if, if they still exist, I, I will not have access to them. Um, there are teachers, of course, you know, teachers being able to look into this data with the right uh, processes uh, and um, means and uh, privacy rights uh, uh, regulations uh, to uh, access this data, being able to look into uh, the student progress and adapt uh, their pedagogy uh, accordingly. Um, that is what we call adaptive learning. Uh, that is a way to empower teachers with uh, the possibility of addressing students one by one rather than doing course for the mass. Schools and government in the same, in the same area, you know, with the proper anonymization, would be able to understand how a certain cohort behaves, how the change of um, education program you know, has uh, an impact on uh, the curses of this and this other cohort. Um, obviously, research and researchers obviously are very much interested in this, particularly cognitive science, uh, AI, um, and um, overall neuroscience, you know, and all those sciences that are to deal with edu education. And then finally, a uh, strong belief is that there is a untapped market for uh, the education sector to look into and to provide uh, very powerful products that will allow kids and teachers and all the actors to behave m in, in a different way and take benefit of this uh, data collection. Now, the question, of course, is how do we do this? Um, there is, uh, of course, we could say where well, there is GDPR. GDPR is obviously the uh, regulation that um, everybody has to deal with and, and obey. Um, 
And it provides a uh, very nice chapter called Data Portability that applies to education as well and will obviously enforce uh, the right for a student to collect its data back and then uh, be able possibly to uh, share them uh, with you know, whomever they wish, if they wish, you know, they may just keep the data for themselves. But GDPR does not say how this data, uh, or does not put a framework around how this data should be shared, and that's the next step for us, and this is how we look forward in the education work group, how do we, how do we provide tools and means and things and thoughts, sorry, uh, on how to uh, use this data in, with a different uh, perspective that is uh, specific to the education sector. Uh, we're dealing most of the time with minors. Uh, there is a strong ethical uh, aspect in education that, you know, about discrimination and yada yada. And when I say yada yada, it's not, I'm not being uh, uh, arrogant here. It's just like there are so many. Um, of course, uh, of those of those criteria need to be to be taken into account. So, we want to generalize this and get into uh, um, a perspective where we would like to develop a standard, uh, a standard uh, for data exchange. Uh, a standard should not be uh, defining at the API level necessarily how things should work, but it's more a general rule on how to control, uh, how to provide the different players of you know, the diagram I was showing before, this one, how to provide all these players the necessary means to exchange data, uh, provide consent, uh, reject consent, um, uh, use data, um, delete data, those things that are, should be expressed in a standard way, particularly because we're dealing with minors, it should be very straightforward, uh, it should be uh, Entirely ethical, you know, with the ethics, you know, ethics being you know, something a topic that we can discuss. But of course, there are uh, a lot of areas that uh, that that we need to focus on. And to that to that extent, um, we've created a group that is now, uh, or actually, a, a an initiative called a new governance. It's a governance uh, standardization body that we are um, now developing. Uh, with the, uh, the blessing of the, Euro the EU and Margot Versteiger, who we may know is a commissioner for uh, technology uh, or digital um, life, you know, is, is supporting. And this standard is really trying to address everything that is related to transfer and, and how we exchange data. So that is data transfer, authentication, security protocols, content management, data formats, user ontology, users' rights, yeah, 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 and you can, I'm, I'm not gonna read all of them. Uh, Non-personal reference data and personal information management systems, and this is, you know, the, the specifically the topic we talked about with COSI. Actually, this is a cloud that acts as a personal information management system. What goes in, what goes out, how things go go in and out. You know, this is the the uh, the, the challenge that we are facing when we are developing this. So, this is an open governance uh, consortium. Uh, led by um, some of um, the people that you already know, my data, obviously, the thing, uh, Federation Internet Nouvelle Generation in France, uh, several other companies and, uh, and government bodies that are uh, putting together a proposal. And if you are uh, an API professional who have, uh, and you have thoughts about how things could work in the education sector, please join us. Just head to a new governance.org and then Su submit uh, your uh, uh, particip express of participation, uh, uh, and then we'll be happy to uh, have you on board and help us moving this forward. Um, we're doing a, a series of first implementation. There is um, a famous French university, Sorbonne actually, uh, who's already starting working on this. Uh, people from Denmark, people from the Netherlands uh, are ad adhering to this uh, standard body, um, and that will be something we hope will uh, help further advance the uh, thinking of personal data in the education sector. Thank you very much. Um, I have time, I think, maybe yeah, two or three minutes for, time for yeah, questions. Yeah, probably, probably time for one. Is there, are there questions uh, for JB? Wow. Yeah, I know this is after lunch, and then you guys are all asleep. Uh, come on. So maybe... Yep, there we are.
<coughs> yes, hi, thank you. So I was I was thinking about uh, parents, like in this, uh, you know, just kind of what can you tell us about like how parents can access the data or like how you're integrating parents in the discussion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, parents obviously, because uh, we're talking most of the time of, about minors, uh, they have to be, um, uh, they have a right to express consent on behalf of uh, the kids, and they have a uh, parental authority, they call. Um, so they are first and foremost the uh, uh, point of contact and the, the um, mandatory um, consent giver uh, in, in, the first, in the first place. Once things are in place, uh, they are obviously um, the idea is that they go, they disappear from the value chain and let you know the the, the flow of data being established. Um, since you're talking about parents, you know, teachers have also legitimate access. So uh, I remember talking with the Ministère d'Education Nationale in the French Education Ministry. Um, they were talking about this this concept of a grade being a personal data. Uh, when you are doing an essay and then your teacher is grading this essay, this is a personal data. He has, or he or she has graded your work and by, by definition, because it's your work, his annotation to it is a personal data. So according to GDPR, you have the right to amend this personal data and that of course does not work. Uh, but you know, there are you know, legitimate rights to access data uh, and to modify data that are given to the different uh, stakeholders here. Um, yeah. The All right. Thank you, JB. Thanks.